The second fundamental, in addition to thinking that people are good and society is the problem, government is the solution, they're future oriented. This is very, very important and I don't think any conservative can understand this in their bones um, the way I do having, having once been a leftist. Future oriented. A, what I would say a normal way of looking at human affairs is to look at the past and see what worked, what doesn't work, how people have behaved for thousands of years, um, and what the limits then that, that you can accomplish. How much can you change things? Have people changed in 3,000 years? Don't believe it. How could we read the Iliad? How could you read the Bible and relate to the people in it if people had changed? People haven't changed. This is the same stories for 3,000 years. You know, the technology changes, so there are aspects that change, but the fundamental people's greeds, their lusts, Cain killing Abel. I mean, come on. We see this among Republicans today. I mean, it's... A <laughs> <laughs> So people, people don't change, so cons it's now the conservative view. I mean, our country has moved polarized in this way, and we now have a left, which we, a significant left, which we never had before. Um, but, you know, when the founders got together, I mean, I, you know, whatever their politics, they all had, had this common sense. In framing a constitution, we're going to look at the past, the history of monarchies, the history of aristocracies, the history of democracies. And they thought a democracy is not, you know, they thought like Churchill, it's, it's the worst system except for all the others. I mean, and they were very fearful of a democracy because they saw that people are swept up in passions and if, if the majority rules, it's going to lord it over the, the, minor the minority, tyrannize the minority and crush them. That's why they put in the checks and balances and the limits. Progressives don't look at the past. If they did, they would never have dreamed up Obamacare <laughs> for crying out tears. You know, socialized medicine has failed for the last 70 years. Central planning, that's what the Soviet Union was about. There are libraries of books about its failures and why it can't possibly work, and yet, they ran through this centralized system, and now it's, you know, it's coming back to haunt them, but how could a, an intelligent person, as I say, these are not stupid people, but how could an intelligent person think that you could have a centrally planned healthcare system that works? Ah, anyway, progressives don't look at the past. Uh, they look at the past to discard it. That's why they all talk about a living constitution. It's, it's an old document, the constitution. Well, people don't change. So yeah, it needs, uh, you, you know, there are new technologies and there are all kinds of problems like that. But the fundamental, the fundamental core reality of human beings and their societies don't change. That's why the constitution, even though it was written a long time ago, is still the wisest political do document ever written. And, you know, we are abandoning it as we are at our peril. What progressives look at is the future. You know, we, oh, well, look, there's all these, uh, all these children who aren't learning in school. Let's increase the hours. <laughs> of the bad schools. We'll have these bad teachers teaching them longer, and then they'll, they'll long. Well, we're spending billions of dollars on these early school programs that test after test shows don't work, because it's, it's obviously it's not just the schools. But the future, so they, ha they have a future where everybody is, go we're gonna throw money at poor people and that's gonna make them just like middle class people. No, it's not. That's the problem. It's not. But their future, in which there's perfect e there's equality, there's no war, there's no poverty, is imaginary. 
the difference between the past and the future. The past, you can make mistakes in analyzing, but it, it actually happened, and there's actually records. The future is a fantasy. It's a delusion. And it's the core belief of everybody on the left that there is this golden future if we can just get enough power and enough money to achieve it. I, can't, I, I still have this vision of Nancy Pelosi on the day they got Obamacare through, beaming and saying, first we got, was it Social Security? And I think bankrupt. And then we got Medicare, bankrupt. And now we're going to quadruple down on Obamacare. What could she have been thinking? Um, what she's thinking is that this is the cornerstone of the socialist future, which is what she believes in. That, you know, everything else fails because we didn't get enough money. We couldn't extract enough money because of these evil Republicans who are anti-taxation. It's an imaginary future, and that's what makes it so dangerous. These people are pumped up. Um, their own, they're intoxicated by their own self-righteousness at bringing about the wonderful world which all you and all Republicans and conservatives are determined to prevent from happening, and that's the only obstacle to them. We, human beings, are the root cause of all social problems and all government problems as well. If human beings weren't so screwed up in their way, you know, like lying, it's not hard to lie, is it? So, every, so everybody sort of does it, they're innocent, when they do the fib, it smooths things over. But then when power is at stake and when you know, wonderful goods are at stake, the lies grow and they grow and they grow until you have a president who what, 36 times told the American people you can keep your health care, we're not going to take your plan away. Lie, knowing he was lying. Why did he lie? Because as we build a socialist future, it's going to be so good, we just have to get over this hump so any, any lie will, will, that serves it will be good. The more, the more beautiful the idea, the nobler the cause, the greater the crimes you are willing to commit. If you could actually have a world where there was no war, no poverty, the, on and on, all these things eliminated, what lie wouldn't you, would you not tell and what crime would you not commit? And that's why progressives in power had killed 100 million people in peacetime. This is not just like Hitler did in war. In peacetime, progressives killed over a hundred million people across the communist world. Lenin did not come to power saying, I'm going to create gulags and put uh, tens of million people in slave labor camps and slaughter others. That's not what he said, peace, land, bread. He had a vision of the beautiful future that Marx had promised. That's what he had a vision of. And that's what caused him to be such an evil individual as he was. The third thing, I gotta, the third fundamental problem or thing you, you, you need to watch in the left, I mean, you, you can see the syndrome, is this vision of the perfect future, the land that never existed and never will, but which you identify. Everything that you do is to get to that land. Every, every sacrifice you make Every misdeed that you excuse yourself in doing is justified by that future. Your allegiance to that future causes you to be alienated from your country. And that uncertain loyalty to country is endemic in the Democratic Party. And I'm, I'm sorry to say Republicans let them get away with this all the time. 